Hi, Nick Byron from 360 Insights. And in today's video, I, I want to take a different approach. I really actually want to talk a little bit more about 360 Insights. Traditionally, I try to stay away from 360 Insights as a topic of these videos. But for today, I want to talk about the research that we have going on and the, the topics that we're going to be covering over, I'd say, the next three, six, 12 months. Um, because A, it's important. I really want to share what we're working on here at 360 Insights. But at the same time, we're actively looking for stories to cover in our research. And really what we're looking to understand from practitioners and organizations is with regards to these technologies, how have they impacted your organization? How have you overcome and really seen success when it comes to these various topics that we're going to be covering? Because for us, it fuels our research. These become stories that we fuel within the research, whether it be a podcast, our primary research and thought leadership, or it could be highlighting a very specific customer story or anatomy of decisions or case studies. So again, what I want to do today is just kind of cover some of the topics that we're going to be reviewing over the next, uh, I'd say, foreseeable future. The first topic is really software and technology in the impact on employee experience. So we're going to be kind of looking at it through a few lenses. Uh, one of them is obviously the everyday worker and how software and technology is enabling the employee experience, enabling to be better, faster, uh, happier at their job, feel like they're uh, part of the culture or whatever it might be. But also we want to take a, a lens and look at how it is really impacting deskless and frontline workers, because those are even more challenging for organization to get in touch with. These are people that don't have ready access to email. They're not sitting on a computer. And in some cases, they're not even allowed to have a cell phone on their hands. So what we're really trying to look at also is how software and technology is impacting the employee experience from a desk in frontline worker environment. And we'd love to hear stories about that. Another topic that we're looking into is actually how software and technology is enabling managers. If you think about it, a lot of the times, especially when someone has just recently promoted to manager, uh, at the end of the day, they may not have the skills to be a manager. I call it battlefield promotions where these people are promoted. I, I have the legacy of being in sales. I've been in sales for uh, longer than I'd like to admit. And typically what we find in sales is that the best sales rep is typically promoted to sales manager, but almost never have I seen that that person that was promoted to manager had the training and skills and the ability to be an effective manager. So typically what ends up happening is um, some end up being wildly successful while others fail out. And it's not because they're bad managers, it's just because they didn't have the skills uh, nor the training to end up being good managers. So we wanna look into software and technology and how it's enabling better managers, but also not just these beginning managers, but as you start moving up the chain, the challenges become more difficult. And what we find out there is, again, there's little training, a little enablement to help these managers be better at their job. So we want to look into software technology, how that's making that happen. Another topic is, it, it may seem like table stakes, but at the end of the day, um, we still see a lot of this. And this is how um, really getting into how HIRS systems or HCM systems are enabling small businesses. And what we find is that there's a lot of businesses that don't traditionally, you know, if you think about it, small businesses don't traditionally have an HR person. And then eventually they grow up and they get bigger and bigger. And at some point in time, someone gets appointed to be, you're taking care of HR. And what I find is maybe that's typically the corporate controller or the CFO, but not someone that's formally an HR person. And then they grow up a little bit more and they start bringing in a real uh, head of HR. But these companies don't necessarily think about the systems that need to support an HR environment. And what we also find is that um, they don't really understand the impact that these systems can have on them. So what we want to do is really actually talk to a lot of organizations that have grown into that, that have really grown into the need of having the HIRS system, understand kind of what initiated the search for a platform, what was that criteria that they were putting together, who are the parties that they were evaluating, who they landed on from a solution provider perspective, excuse me, and then ultimately how it impacted their business. Now, it's no secret that once you go from nothing to something, the impact is great, but we really want to highlight that because I still believe that there's a lot of education that needs to be done for these small businesses, because at the end of the day, 
they're not thinking about this. They're thinking about how to grow their business, how to get better sales, how to get better marketing. I mean, a key indicator is that you typically find that they don't bring on an HR HR person right away. They have this uh, HR, excuse me, a, a corporate controller or the CFO happens to deal with all the HR related issues until they eventually grow up to be big enough to bring someone. So again, that's a really interesting topic that we're looking to, to look into because it may be table stakes. It may be something that organizations have been talking about forever, but we're still seeing this challenge today evermore. I mean, it just seems like it hasn't gone away and we really want to highlight some, uh, some real success stories around that. Another interesting topic that we're looking into is kind of the inflection of payroll in the impact on employee experience. I personally say that, you know, if, if you think about it, it wasn't that long ago where ADP and paychecks ruled the world. If you had, especially here in the States, if, if you were getting paid, you were receiving a paycheck from one of those two organizations. And typically it was a physical paycheck or at least a physical pay stub. But over the past, I'd say maybe decade or so, the advancement in payroll is probably greater than we've seen in almost any other aspect of HR or finance, to be quite honest with you. And it can now dramatically impact an employee experience. There is more aspects to payroll, such as earned wage access um, and other ways that you can employ people to, A, make their uh, make the employee's experience more enjoyable, uh, make them feel like they're being enabled to be successful just simply from, you know, helping them with self-service tools or earn wage access and things of that type. But at the same time, there is an inflection point of how it's impacting businesses as well and how they can employ people. Things like uh, PEOs and, and other services or global payroll, for example, is now allowing organizations to have a much more global reach without the impact of uh, putting someone in country or an entire team in country to develop payroll. So again, we really want to look from that perspective and stories of A, how has payroll impacted employees, but also how has it pay impacted organizations as well? How has it enabled them to be a more global organization, more agile? Um, really interested in hearing stories about that. Another one, which is a topic that I don't think is a talked about enough, and we actually are working on a case study, uh, excuse me, a research note that we're going to be publishing within the next, I'd say, week or two. And it's really looking into analytics. I remember a while back, I was talking to one of the analysts in the space and said, you know, we really should be focusing more on analytics. And they're like, oh, Nick, we've been there, done that. The reality is we haven't. Um, a lot of the, I'd say, solutions have started to implement some type of analytics, reporting, visualization within their actual tools themselves, but they're not, I don't know how to put it best, but they're not very robust. They're not really going to truly get the job done. And what I am seeing is that if you think about the world of HR, over the past, geez, I don't know, 10, 15 years, HR has been on a buying spree. They're buying all these different software tools and applications. And, you know, you fast forward to today, some companies could have five, 10, 15 different pieces of software within their HR environment, which I call digital islands. Um, none of them which talk to each other, none of them which actually kind of have that integration. And as a result, you have data silos that are living throughout the organization. Couple that with the fact with Finance is typically independent and they have their own applications and so on and so forth. But what I have found, I've seen this movie play out before because what's happening in the world of HR is very similar to what I saw happen in sales and market enablement, I'd say 15 or so years ago, is there's a lot of power in the data that's been gathering and building up within these organizations. And that power is really truly the ability for organizations to make better overall decisions within the within their company that can really truly impact whether it's the employee experience um better decisions around uh where they should take an organization how they can grow the organization um just so many different things that can be really garnered from pulling together these disparate sources into a way that you can start to view it to make some sense. Uh, the report that we're going to be publishing, what I really like about this one, is um, this organization 
really took a methodical approach to how they want to think about data analytics and how it can impact their organization. They went in with certain hypotheses and actually they uh, were able to disprove their hypothesis, but then also uncovered something else within the organization that is truly, uh, by doing that, is able to make decisions that A, will cost less money for the business, help them run more efficient, but actually fill gaps that they're starting to see come further down the line. And that's just one story. And I think that there's a lot of uh, stories that we want to uncover of how organizations have been successful in terms of A, deploying some type of people analytic solution or analytic solutions within their HR environment. But then B, we really want to explore what the impact has been as part of that decision making. So these are just some of the topics that we're looking into from a 360 Insights perspective. Um, I will say, I mean, I purposely left out AI. Um, the reason for that is, is AI has just become table stakes. Um, every vendor is offering some type of AI solution. And quite honestly, all the other research firms are covering it. It's not to say that we're not covering it. It's just to say that it's, for me, it's a less important aspect of things that we want to uncover because A, there's still more, more maturity that has to be done in the world of AI and the vendors that offer these solutions and the education that has to be done with the end, uh, the vendors, excuse me, the end users. But at the same time, what I am finding is there's a lot of coverage in it as well. And the last thing I want to do is uh, continue to cover uh, a, a topic that's already saturated in the market. The last thing I'll say is these are not the only topics that we're covering. We're going to be looking into multiple other topics. And the other thing is, is that you might find that they may seem narrow in scope, but 360 Insights looks at our agendas a little bit differently. And we tend to look at them as themes that we plan on covering on our research. So from a theming perspective, what we do is it's not just like a, a lot of research firms will be a topic, end of the rainbow, and then a major report initiative. At us, these are themes that we're going to be looking at over the course of the year. And in that perspective, what we're going to be doing is covering these topics from multiple angles, and it's going to be under a base of research, podcast, analyst insights, customer stories, webinars, and so on and so forth. So if you didn't hear something specific, like, for example, performance enablement, skill ontology, uh, talent acquisition, and so on and so forth, it's because we plan on looking at those through lenses within the various topics. So it's not to say that we're not going to be covering skills ontology, talent management, talent acquisition, workforce management, so on and so forth, because we will. And the goal is to really look at them through these lenses and how technology from different aspects are enabling uh, the employee experience, managers, and so on and so forth. And then lastly, if you have any topics that I haven't said out loud, but you think would be interesting for us to cover, whether you're a vendor and you're thinking that there's an area that's not being covered from a research standpoint that honestly should, or you're a practitioner and there's a topic that you would love to see because you think it's a challenge in the market, we would love to hear about that. Uh, we are not stuck in stone in our research agenda. We have very much made it an organic thing that will change and grow over time. And I'm very interested in hearing what the market has to say in terms of research that they want to hear. So again, just as a quick summary to kind of bring it all together, um, from a research standpoint, a couple topics that we're really looking at from a, a high level perspective, again, how software and technology is enabling employee experience, um, but also um, how it's enabling businesses to, to, to perform better as a whole. Uh, you look at, for example, technology and how it's enabling managers and how it's enabling organizations to make better decisions. Uh, HIRS and its impact on small businesses, really looking at how organizations grow into the need of needing an HIRS solution. Uh, and then looking at payroll and the impact on the employee experience, but also how it's enabled organizations and businesses to be more agile. Um, again, being in a US-based company and starting to hire people throughout the globe used to be a very challenging thing. And now with either global payroll or PEOs and all the other services out there, uh, man, it, it has really enabled organizations to be extremely nimble to, to bring on someone in a new country almost overnight. And then finally, uh, analytics and really looking into analytics and 
A, how organizations have developed a people analytics solution, and then B, how they've used that to make tangible impacts to their business. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to you know listen to me. And really, again, I want to hear from you if there's topics that we haven't covered uh, or I haven't covered in this video that you would love to hear about, love to hear from them. Thank you again and um, good luck.